What's going on guys? My name is Mr. Dalek JD and welcome to my ultimate gauntlet guide. This is going to involve all 20 dormant hand locations, building all four gauntlets, upgrading them to the redeemed hands and then upgrading them a second time to the exalted hands. Some guides on YouTube you see might just have the first part of the upgrade process, but we're showing you how to upgrade all four gauntlets twice in this video. I'm going to break down this guide into sections with timestamps you can see on your screen now. So if you know how to do some of these steps, you can just skip ahead to what you need to know. But I do advise you watch this entire video from start to finish as you'll learn some really cool tips. And if you do find this guide useful, a thumbs up would be awesome. So jumping straight into this, the first thing we need to do is to pick up the Sentinel Artifact, which is in the Amphitheater. Super obvious to do, but obviously you need that before we can go further. You'll also need to pick up the Golden Bridles so we can ride Pegasus, which can be found in the intersection of Treasuries or Stoa of the Athenians. Later on, we're going to need the Apollo's Wheel Shield. You should be building it anyway in your game to protect you, but if you don't know how to do that, then I'll have a link for it in the description. Once the Talisman has been picked up, we can begin building the four gauntlets. And if you walk past the Oracle in the Temple of Apollo, she's going to mention a location of a primordial weapon. This location is going to be a dormant hand location. There are four dormant hands in every game, but there is a possible 20 locations for these to spawn. By using the location the Oracle mentioned, you can find these very very easily but I'm going to go ahead and break down all 20 locations for you now showing what the oracle's location reference would be on screen as well as the hand location. They all appear with a purple mist and to interact with them you need to melee them so the first one can be found in that crystal in the intersection of treasuries. The second location is here in the intersection of treasuries by the purple blossoms. A third location can be in the stoa of the Athenians in a pot right there. A fourth can be on another pot by this fountain. Fifth can be right in front of this pillar in Spartan Monument. If you make your way down here, there could be also one on the ground by this fallen statue. Make your way down in front of Zeus, there can be one in this dirt pile here. There can be a pot behind this fast travel portal right here. And the last and final location in this section of the map can be in this pile of rubble in front of the arrow. The Oracle gives you hints on where these are. So if you just pay attention and follow where on the map it is, you shouldn't have any trouble. Starting in the River of Sorrow, there can be one location there. There can be another to the left of the Odin machine. Make your way down in Cliff Ruins, there can be one just to the right of this window. There could be also one by this little table there. There could be one next to the left of the bird eagle cage. As you make your way further down on the right, there can be a pot there on Cliff Ruins. As we enter the center of the world, there can be one location right in front of the shrine of Uranus. There can also be one just to the left of this fast travel here at the back. Make your way towards the venom trap. There can be one in this crystal right here. There can also be one to the left of the Titan wall by right there on that crystal. And then finally, the final location we can find here is in Python Pass right down on the ground there. So in solo you find one of these, pick them up and take them to one of the shrines. We're going to start with the Gaia quest but break it down very very quickly in case some of you already know how to do this. So pick up a dormant hand and make your way to the Gaia shrine in Spartan Monument. You'll be in a lockdown for about 20 seconds where you'll need to survive and then afterwards you'll be granted with the hand of Gaia. Pick it up and we can start the upgrade quest and we begin in the intersection of treasuries by this plant. Simply shoot the three red crystals, it will dissolve and bring up this small plant which you can pick up and then you can walk over to the shrine to plant down. The movement speed is slow during this and you cannot shoot so just be very careful. In co-op just have people look after the zombie. The next area is in Stoa of the Athenians. You simply want to shoot the three crystals, the plant will dissolve and we pick up that seedling and take it back to the shrine. A final spot is in Temple Terrace. Simply shoot the three crystals, pick up the seedling, take it back to the shrine and you'll notice a portal will have opened which you can can enter to prove yourself to Gaia. You'll be on this cliff face with infinite ammo. This will become a common theme when upgrading all four of these gauntlets. So these are areas which allows you to test the new functionality of the upgrade by its charged ability. So you'll be on this cliff face with three pathways of zombies spawning and all you need to do is just continuously use charge shots on these zombies. You have infinite ammo whilst you're in this area and after a certain amount of time of you killing zombies with charge shots you'll be brought back into the map and you'll have the redeemed hand of Gaia permanently. Now let's move on to the hand of Charon. So find a fallen hand and bring it to Python Pass, place it in here and again a 20 second lockdown that once you have survived you can pick up the hand of Charon and we can start the upgrade process. So for this all you need to do is stand in the river of sorrows water and kill zombies using the hand of Charon. 
After a certain amount of kills, you'll be given a prompt to drink from the water and by doing so will turn your screen red. During this, you won't be able to regenerate any health, so be very careful. But our objective here is to find three coins. Littered around this underground area will be loads of coins, which you'll be able to see through the walls. They glow and they stick out. There are going to be a lot of coins and this is essentially a game of finding the real coins. A real coin will give you a prompt which will say hold to obtain Charon's Obol. The other prompt that you'll see is hold to extinguish the false Obol. Essentially that's just a false coin so it will be destroyed if you hold your interact and you're just looking to find three coins that give you the prompt to obtain which if you have managed to do so you just simply go back to the Charon shrine where similarly to the Gaia upgrade step you place the coins back in the shrine and a portal will open which will teleport you to Shadow's Bank where again the orange is going to test you on the charged abilities of that gauntlet. It sounds silly but the oracle will tell you off if you're not getting charged kills on the zombies in this area but after a short while you will return and you'll have that permanently in your game. The next one we'll be looking at is Oranos. So again, find a fallen hand from the locations we showed you. Take it to the shrine in the center of the world. You'll be in a lockdown and once out, you'll be given the fallen hand of Oranos. For us to get this upgrade, there are three specific sections on the map that we need to bounce zombies' bodies off by using the Oranos to bounce the zombies off feathers. The first location is right by Pack-a-Punch and just by using the weapon and bouncing the zombies' bodies off, you're gonna release a feather which you need to shoot twice at and it will fly back to the shrine. Another feather can be found on the cliff ruins, simply angle it right so when you shoot a zombie its body will bounce off the feather and shoot the feather twice in the air to send it over to the shrine. And the last and final feather we're going to need to bounce zombies bodies off is Python Pass right next to the Sharon shrine. Again once you've done this shoot the feather twice in the air to bring it over to the shrine and you'll have a portal waiting for you to take you to the wind's crest. And in the wind's crest the oracle is basically going to teach you about the charged ability of this gauntlet which essentially is a infinite thunder gun in this particular section it's awesome and again once you've killed enough zombies you'll be brought back into the map and you'll have that permanently for the rest of the game a final gauntlet is the hand of Hemera. so find a fallen dormant hand and take it to the shrine which is situated in the monument of craterus simply survive the 20 second lockdown you'll be given the fallen hand of Hemera, and we can begin the upgrade make your way to upper road and look out of the map slightly on this bridge to see the shield. Shoot it with a bullet weapon until it's facing forwards and then shoot a fallen hand of Hemera shot which should bounce off the crystal and into the pot on the bridge. If done successful you'll see a light on that pot and we can move on. The second location is in Temple Terrace. Again you want to be shooting this shield enough time so it's pointing straight forwards. Shoot a shot of your Hemera and the light should bounce off it into the crystal and then into the pot just below. If for whatever reason you haven't got the angle right on the shields when you're shooting it with the hand of Hemera, don't worry all you need to do is just readjust the shield until you get it to the correct angles. The third and final location is in the gymnasium bathhouse. Now at the map, you'll see the shield on this pillar. Shoot it with a bullet weapon until it is facing forwards and then shoot a shot of the Hemera and it should bounce through the crystal and then into the pot. Now with each of the three pots in these areas we just did, you want to melee it with your Hemera and then bring the light back to the shrine in Monument of Craterus. Stamina up is not necessary, but I do feel it makes this a lot easier because you can almost fail this. And if you do, you have to go back and bounce a shot from the shield again into the pot. Did you see that? I went to Upper Road, I meleeed that pot, and then I bring it back to the Monument of Craterus and melee one of the pots here. And the last pot was in Temple Terrace, so again, melee the light in that pot and then take it all the way over to the shrine and then a portal should open, allowing you to teleport into an arena called Light's Reflection, where again, after a certain amount of time of being in there and getting charge kills, you'll be let out and you'll have the Hemera upgrade. And by now, you should have all four in your game. Now, to be time efficient, whilst you're upgrading all four of these gauntlets, you also want to be trying to complete challenges by paying tribute to the Oracle in the Temple of Apollo. 
Just like in the main easter egg quest where you have to complete a certain amount of challenges in order to light the challenge flame to an eternal flame, you're going to want to do the same thing here. And in the solo game, I completed enough challenges so I claimed two epic rewards. Once I claimed my second epic reward, flaming pot by my challenges was lighting up blue. And if you melee this fire with your shield, your spear should light up with blue flame. If you've done that, we can move on to the next step. And before before you can do this step, you have to have all four of the gauntlets upgraded by this point. With your Apollo's Wheel Shield, you want to bring it out and melee the fire by the challenges, which should light your spear on fire. You then want to throw it to this pillar by the Gymnasium Bathhouse, but you want to aim it so your flaming spear flies above this pot, and what should happen is it should light it on fire. If you miss the pot, your character will give a quote saying that you failed, and you simply need to just relight your spear and throw it until the pot is lit up. We can now move on to the next step which involves getting elemental catalyst zombies. To explain it simply, we're going to need to kill one specific catalyst zombie in the shrine of the four gauntlets. In my game, I had a water catalyst spawn first, and for this, you simply want to go to the Uranos shrine and kill the water zombie in front of the shrine. If done correctly, you should see the soul go into the top of the shrine, and now we need to get between 5 and 10 zombie kills, where each zombie that's killed will have its soul entering the shrine. Once completed, you'll notice that that no more souls will be entering in the shrine but you can also go to the pack-a-punch machine and look above it and if you see a symbol lit up the color of your catalyst zombie you have done it correctly and as you can see here we have a blue symbol on the pack-a-punch for Hemera, a electric catalyst zombie must be killed on the shrine where you'll see the soul enter it and then you need to get 5 to 10 zombie kills and again you can check your progress if it's completed by checking pack-a-punch for the Shrine of Gaia, we need to kill a Fire Catalyst Zombie in front of the Shrine and then get between 5 and 10 zombie kills. And for the Shrine of Sharon, we need to kill a Poison Catalyst in front of it and then get 5 to 10 zombie kills again. Once your Pack-a-Punch machine has all four of these lights illuminated with the different Catalyst colors, the Pack-a-Punch machine will have a prompt to start one of the four Gauntlet challenges. I would advise just before starting this to get a brand new shield and buy some ammo. As we're going to be transported again Again, just like during the first upgrades but this time you don't get infinite ammo and you'll have very difficult enemies to fight. My first challenge was Gaia's challenge which took me back to Earth's Rest where I had a large number of catalyst zombies spawning which I needed to kill. After killing a fair amount of them I teleported out and I was back in the center of the world where I can begin a second challenge by entering through Pack-a-Punch. The next challenge is Wind's Crest where you're going to have a ridiculous amount of skeleton zombies spawning. This one was quite a difficult one, especially since when doing these, you cannot use your elixirs. So I would advise if you need to use a max ammo elixir or something like that, use it before you go into these challenges. But you're free to use your gauntlets, you're free to use your weapons, you're free to use your equipment and specialists. So you're not tied to just the gauntlet like you were in the first upgrade. The Homera challenge takes you to Light's Reflection where you're going to have about four to five of the six armed zombies zombies spawning in. In my game I took a pack a punched mog 12 and it helped me out a ton throughout all four of these challenges so I definitely advise a fully packed mog 12 as the weapon to use for these challenges. And last but not least the final challenge is the Sharon challenge which is in Shadow's Bank where you have this very small area to work with and you have Blightfather spawning in. Definitely advise the Mog 12 here. And once all four challenges have been completed, if you simply hold out a gauntlet in front of the Pack-a-Punch machine, you can now upgrade every gauntlet a second time for free by placing it in the Pack-a-Punch machine, turning it from the redeemed hand into the egg's altered hand. The double upgraded gauntlets aren't necessary to complete the main easter egg but you do get given more ammo in each gauntlet than you would the first upgrade and some gauntlets do have a much more powerful attack. The Hand of Gaia has a much more powerful charged attack than its previous one but my favorite upgrade out of here for the second upgrades is the Hand of Sharon where it works where a charged attack is basically a monkey bomb. But I'd love to know in the comment section below what is your favorite elemental gauntlet out of the four. But that's going to wrap up this Ancient Evil Ultimate Gauntlet Upgrade Guide. If you need any additional help on Ancient Evil, I have a playlist link down below which also contains my full Easter egg tutorial as well as a bunch of other helpful guides on additional builds on the map. But thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.